Hello and welcome to my review of the Legiones Astartes Sakaran Battle Tank for Warhammer the Horus Heresy from Games Workshop. Now one of these tanks uh, will cost you £47.50 which is the same price as a Leviathan Siege Dreadnought which looks a little bit like uh, this. Uh, Dreadnoughts are pretty strong, pretty powerful in this edition, so you might want to um, think about whether you're going for a Dreadnought or a, uh, a Sakaran. Uh, and also the Predator uh, is due to come out soon, and other than the uh, speed, um, its loadout is also quite competitive, um, given the buff to Gravislas cannons and the Predator auto cannon. Uh, and the fact that it can have a conversion beam cannon too. So this tank, uh, it's a tank Games Workshop decided they had to make in a way. It is a staple of Horus Heresy uh, in, in its many flavors. I do question why they've uh, limited it to just this auto cannon uh, variant and why they couldn't uh, put at least a second uh, variant in there. The, the good news is though, uh, if you've got any of the other turrets and things from your resin uh, kits, uh, they are compatible with the plastic kit. Uh, so if you wanted to swap it and have it as a Punisher, you can. No qualms, no difficulties there at all. However, where the changes are is that this turret They've made the hole far too big, bigger than they needed to. That is a massive hole. They could have closed that hole up. I'm not really sure why they've done this, so other than to sell more Sakarans, obviously. Uh, but this turret will not be compatible with your um, resin kits. I mean, it fits on there, and if we were playing a game, it would kind of be all right, but yeah it's <laughs> it's a bit frustrating to put it that way uh you know especially when they've uh, made so many other um things compatible with each other um it's a shame we got to that point but anyway that's my preamble uh complete <laughs> let me talk about the structure of the review so as always i'll have a close look at this tank uh, go through how easy it was to build uh, any difficulties and things uh, we'll go through the spare parts of which they're just the standard uh, spare parts, um, really. I will go through the spare parts, um, which just consists of the different uh, sponsor and weapon options and the vehicle upgrade sprue um, parts, uh, of which I didn't really use any. So that's a whole full sprue I think I've got. Uh, and then uh, we'll go through some size comparisons and finally, I'll go through all of the rules for the Sakaran battle tank. So, first things first, let's have a look at this mini. Um, it's a very nice mini. It fits uh, Horus Heresy uh, extremely well. Uh, I do like the wedge shape uh, that it has. It's a little bit smaller than a uh, Morbus uh, Bombard. Um, Morbus kind of looks like one of these reversing. Um, because its its cannon is is at the back and it launches it that way and that is the front of the tank. Um, the Sponson weapons are uh, fantastic. Uh, you know you can uh, traverse them, oscillate them, whatever. They move about. No need for magnets. They just slot on there. It's it's brilliant. I can't think of a, a better way of mounting these Sponson weapons on that still gives you that freedom of movement uh, on them. Um, you get a number of sponsor weapons, which is fantastic. You get heavy bolters, las cannons, heavy flamers, and uh, Volkite culverins. Um, they're exactly the same sponsor weapons that are on the Kratos tank. So if you picked uh, heavy bolters for the Kratos tank and you pick Volkite for these, you can just take these off and put the heavy bolters on. Absolutely no problem. Fine. No need for magnets. It's just fantastic. Uh, you've got this heavy... You've got this heavy bolter hidden in there as well, which is uh, a usual weapon uh, for the Sakarans. Um, the main turret, the, the actual guns, they do move up and down, which is quite a cool feature. Um, 
You don't have to glue this sensor here, but I did. Uh, if you don't glue it, you can move that up and down, but it's a bit more loose than these guns. Uh, if you haven't already, I'd strongly suggest you go and watch my live stream where I built this tank in the live stream. It took me a uh, live stream and a half, so about four hours or so to fully complete it, and that was not included in the um, sponsors. The one thing I will say, which I've said in a number of videos now, is it's great that we have a Sakaran tank that is £47.50, less than half the price of a resin Sakaran. But when the resin Sakarans first came out, they were not 90, almost £100. They were about 50, 60 pounds or so. They were about 60 pounds or so, and they slowly went up over the years. The original Sakaran is quite an old model now, um, but it has been completely replaced by this plastic one. The point I'm trying to make is, with the resin Sakaran, this piece here, which consisted of about 19 parts, is just one piece on the resin. Now, with cleaning, I could build a resin uh, Sakaran in about one or two hours. It took me three hours just to build both of these side parts of this plastic Sakaran. So while you are saving money short term in purchasing the tank up front, you are losing money uh, in terms of time um, actually building it because it will take you longer to build the plastic one compared to the resin. Detail wise, they're tanks. The detail is extremely similar. The one thing I do prefer on these plastic uh, vehicles is the gaps between the teeth and the tracks. You don't get those big gaps um, that you can see all the way through. Uh, but what that does mean is that you can see the gaps in there where it's just hollow. There's nothing um, going on whatsoever. Um, and if you look at it at the right light, you can see all the way through into the into the tank, which you don't get that with resin. But I just wanted to make that point that the plastic one, while cheaper, will take you longer to build. So in summary, the tracks did take uh, a fair amount of time to put together, uh, much like with the Kratos. It actually shares the same T sprue, <laughs> you know, the track sprue as the Kratos, um, just like building a mini miniature version of the Kratos. But I don't think that the uh, satisfaction is as much as building the Kratos. So if you had a choice between the two tanks, um, it really is up to you which you prefer the most. Um, I like the look of the Kratos uh, to begin with, but now we'll go on to the spare parts. So uh, this is my tray of spare parts, unceremoniously just put, uh, put there. Um, I've got some bits and pieces left over from the uh, vehicle accessory sprue. I say some, I literally used one part, which was the um, hatch. I've kind of got a semi, I've kind of almost got a fully complete spare accessory sprue there, which I definitely could probably, which I could definitely sell on uh, if I didn't want to use any of the uh, pintle mounted weapons or frag uh, launchers or, or anything like that. Um, but it's but again, this is a brilliant sprue and it's one of the best decisions that they've made having this sprue with kind of all of their vehicle kits so far. The Kratos, the Sakaran, the Rhino, the Land, the Land Raider, hopefully the Proteus Land Raider and hopefully the Predator as well. Um, these are some of the other spare parts like the tracks, which you would use with the Kratos, the uh, Sponson weapons. I didn't use the Heavy Flamers, Heavy Bolters or Last Cannons, but like I said, don't fret too much uh, if you used if you didn't use those, but you have them on your Kratos or you know the upcoming Predator. You'll be able to swap them about with with all of those tanks as well, which is great. On to the size comparisons. Then the first size comparison I obviously want to make. I can't wait to give you this uh, comparison. Is with the Kratos, um, a Big Daddy version. They are similar height. Um, you know, from there to there. The, the hole wise, I would probably say um, the Kratos is just a little bit taller, just a tiny bit. Um, but width wise, yeah, the Kratos has it uh, again, only by a, a fraction, by a tank tread width, I would say it's got it. 
Um, it's odd that, you know, the Kratos has this um, dozer blade, but the Sakaran doesn't. I was really hoping that we get some kind of dozer blade uh, for the Sakaran, but we did not. You can really see the um, design cues uh, from the Kratos. The Kratos is, is, I say sunk lower. The tracks seem to be sunk lower to it. Um, I'm not sure whether you know, the armor-wise, the Kratos warrants this 14 all round. I still am unsure about that. Still think it should have been, you know, 14 on the front and then 13 and 12 or 14, 13 and 13 even. Um, but there we go. Uh, it's got the same number of exhausts, but the exhausts are bigger and they're all the same size on the Kratos. Um, you know, they've both got these turrets that can move. Uh, you know, I have not equipped my Kratos with the, the full battle cannon there. Um, but yeah, so that's the first comparison I wanted to make. Uh, you know, there's not much in it height wise, uh, but definitely sort of width wise, um, the Kratos has it. Another comparison I wanted to make uh, was with a Rhino. Here is the Rhino. As you can see, it's a fair bit taller uh, than a Rhino and just a little bit wider, maybe not even a tank tread. Uh, of width wider, um, but it's definitely going to be a you know main battle tank uh, bigger than the Predator um, when I do get a Predator. Uh, but if you can imagine the Rhino with a turret and some sponsons on, then that's going to be a similar sort of size. Another comparison I'd like to make is just with the Spartan uh, assault tank. Um, you know, the biggest Land Raider uh, here at the moment. And yeah, the Spartan is a fair, fair bit um, uh, taller and thicker, and it has all those, those uh, last cannons on it as well. Um, so, just give you an idea, just to give you an idea of where it would stack up. It's not a small tank by any means. You know, it's a fast tank, uh, but it is still a main battle tank uh, for the Astartes. Some final comparisons I'd like to make uh, are just with other Sakarans. So here's a Venator, which I was really hoping they'd make in plastic. They might make uh, different um, Sakarans uh, in the future. We've got it next to a Punisher, which I've just showed you with the, the turret. Um, and then I have an Omega as well. And last but not least, uh, the OG um, Sakaran. They're all the same size. Um, giving you an impression there, they're all the same size. Uh, they look fantastic. The only one missing is, of course, the Arcus, because they still haven't built that. I am slowly getting round to it, but the, the Sabre tank is calling me before I, uh, I build the, the Arcus. Uh, I was actually hoping to build the Arco Arcus before um, I picked up this uh, Sakaran, but, you know, Games Workshop are relentless in their uh, release schedule, and here we are. So, all in all, I have six Sakaran battle tanks. If I was gonna, if I was gonna pick up any more, it would uh, be another Omega for sure, uh, another Arcus, and possibly another Venator. Um, but I'm quite happy with two. But I'm quite happy running two, uh, you know, standard Sakarans, um, and then having you know, a few more of the other uh, variants. Uh, but I'm gonna hold fire picking up any more until, until we see what's around the corner, if they are gonna bring out any other variants. So that's where it stands uh, next to the resin miniatures. So yes, there are 400 pounds worth of uh, Sikarans right there. <laughs> Final comparison I'd like to make is just with some Dreadnought. So we've got the plastic Dreadnought from the Age of Darkness set. Uh, we have a, a Relic Dreadnought and then we've got the plastic uh, Leviathan Siege Dreadnought. Um, and this is what I mean, you know, you can go for a wibbly wobbly, no, you can go for a uh, Leviathan uh, Siege Dreadnought um, or a Sakaran. They're both the same price. It really is up to you uh, what you're gonna uh, enjoy the most in your army. Um, they're both heavy support choices. Uh, if you're going for a because there's only one variant of the Sakaran, and I guess 
in a way there's multiple variants of the leviathan because you can equip it with the range weapons you can magnetize the weapons you can do all those things the sakaran is at the moment quite limited in uh you know it's, it's purpose um with uh, with only one uh, main uh, weapon uh, right now just a couple more uh, size comparisons uh, with a Catafacti Terminator and a Legion Ones Astartes uh, Space Marine in Mark VI power armor. As you can see, it's still a, a beefy tank, uh, even with um, you know Terminators and uh, normal Space Marines. And a final size comparison, just with some 40k miniatures. So we've got a normal Space Marine, Slime Marbo, and an Intercessor. Intercessors are making this tank look a little bit small though putting that out there okay so this is my part of the review where i will go through all of the sakar and battle tanks rules uh, not surprisingly uh, you'll find the sakar and battle tank in the heavy support uh, section there's a number of uh, sakar there's a number of sakarans in this uh, heavy support section so i'll break them down uh for you you've got the standard sakaran which is equipped with a turret mounted accelerator auto cannon uh, you've got the arcus which is the one equipped with the arcus missile launcher um <coughs> it's like an upgraded whirlwind really with three different missile types uh, you've got the sakaran punisher which is the one with the punisher rotary cannon uh, which looks awesome uh, you've got the sakaran venator uh, which is the anti-tank uh, sakaran which has which is equipped with this center line mounted neutron beam laser and finally you have the legion sakaran omega squadron which has the turret mounted omega plasma array you know the twin plasma uh, cannon type weapons so all in all you have five so all in all you have five uh, different types of Sakarans, and the only difference uh, with all of them is their main weapon but the Venator instead of it having a hull mounted heavy bolter it has a pintle mounted heavy bolter because there's not really any space to put the um, hull mounted heavy bolter but that's included in its points cost speaking of points cost uh, a standard Legion Sakaran uh, is the cheapest uh, out of all of them uh, it costs 190 points which is the same points cost as a punisher uh, the most expensive being uh, the omega uh, which is a little bit more expensive than a land raider proteus actually so the sakaran's uh, stat line reads it's a movement of 16 inches uh, ballistic skill 4 front armor 13 side and rear are both 12 and it has four hull points Super. How does that compare to a Predator? Uh, well, it's 70 points more to start off with. Uh, it's only two inches faster, um, but its armor and its armor is the same except for the rear. Uh, the rear, it has uh, 12 armor points instead of the 10. So it's not as vulnerable uh, from attacks from the rear. And it has one extra hull point at four. So this turret mounted accelerator autocannon, which I will go through right this moment. I'm not going to go through the other weapons, um, but I will be doing reviews of all of those um, at some point. So the accelerator autocannon, <clears throat> you'll find it in the auto weapons section. It's a 48 inch range, strength 7, AP4, heavy 8, rending 6 plus. And most importantly, it has Exoshock on a 6+. plus. Um, so that's pretty decent. You know, it's got eight shots there. It can, it can rend things. And also it's good against uh, any of those pesky Mechanicum units too with the Exoshock. Super. How does that compare to a Predator autocannon? I've heard they're quite, pretty good now. Uh, well... Um, the Predator Auto Cannon, well, the Predator Cannon actually has a better strength, which is really, it's quite odd because that what that means is it means that this Accelerator Auto Cannon cannot instant death, um, you know, Space Marines if they fail their saves, if they've got more than one wound. However, the Predator Cannon can. The Cannon can. Anyway, um, 
Also, the Predator Cannon has four shots and it still has that rending six plus. So what you're gaining with the Accelerator Auto Cannon is double the shots and exo, and exo shock six plus. So if you're going against Mechanicum and you also want more shots and you're not that bothered about uh, a lower strength, go for the Sakaran with the Auto Cannon. If you really want to have that strength eight, but still have the range and the AP and the rending, go for the Predator. It's also equipped with a whole mounted, it's also equipped with a whole front mounted heavy bolter uh, and two sponsor mounted heavy bolters. So pretty much you can have three there. Um, its special rules is, and it's got smoke launchers. Special rules, Legion is Astartes. A Legion Sakaran squadron may take up to one additional Legion Sakaran. It's one of the reasons why I picked up this plastic one. Uh, not only just, well, the main reason is to do an unboxing and review for you guys, but also so that I could run them in a pair of two. It may exchange both of its sponsor mounted heavy bolters for one of the following. So two sponsor mounted heavy flamers for free, two sponsor mounted last cannons at 10 points per model and two sponsor mounted Volkite culverins at 10 points per model. So, you know, for straight up 200 points, you know, you, you're getting a heavy bolter, the accelerator auto cannons and the last cannons. What I will say is it has to fire all of these weapons at a single target. So just bear that in mind, you know, if you want a dedicated anti-tank vehicle, then, you know, it's probably better going for the uh, Venator. If you want a dedicated anti sort of low armor uh, vehicle, um, low armor penetrating vehicle, then probably better going for a Punisher. Uh, if you want something that's anti-air, but also can fire without line of sight, go for the Arcus. This thing um, rends and is good at exoshock. This thing rends things to death. So it can let rip with those eight shots at a decent range. You know, let's face it, it'll have that effective range of 64 inches uh, when you factor in its movement speed of 16. It may take one of the following, pintle mounted twin linked bolter for five points, pintle mounted combi weapon of any type for 10 points, uh, pintle mounted heavy bolter for 10, heavy flamer for five, multi melter for 20, Havoc Launcher for 15, and it may also take a hole mounted Hunter Killer Missile for five points and Searchlights for five points. So what this means is if you wanna give it a pintle mounted heavy bolter as well, then you'll be running four heavy bolters and the auto cannon, which would of course be 20 shots, um, which is quite a lot of firepower. Um, at a minimum range of 36 inches. Super, which scenario would I take this uh, vehicle? Well, I've already mentioned it a couple of times. Uh, anything with a Mechanicum or vehicles and you want it to disable them with that Exoshock, uh, it's, of course, it's not a big, of course, it's not a huge chance of you getting that six on the Exoshock, but with eight shots, you've got to, that chance does increase. And also with the rending of six plus as well, um, you can definitely uh, have a chance at knocking off the hull points uh, with glancing hits at vehicles that have um, you know much better armor. So that's the rules part of this review. In summary, it's a nice kit to build. It's a, a good looking uh, miniature as well. Uh, it definitely has the feel of um, Horus Heresy and. And I've always liked the look of a Sakaran uh, in a Horus Heresy Force. And it seems like the safe bet for Games Workshop to bring this out in plastic. Once again, a little bit like the Spartan, I'm more pleased with this model's existence and what that means uh, down the line than the actual model itself. We already had a decent resin kit for this. In fact, it's uh, one of my two resin uh, kits that I always have recommended. If you go far back in the videos, you'll see that I always recommend this as a resin kit and the Contemptor Dreadnought to kind of ease you in into getting used to resin miniatures from Forge World. Of course, I can no longer really do that um, because both of those models uh, have been taken off of Forge World and now we've just got the plastic kits. However, there are still a couple of variants uh, for this Sakaran on Forge World, uh, and I would still recommend um, 
those if you can if you're leaning more towards an Arcus or an Omega they're good because they have the CAD instructions as well they're newer versions of the Sakaran but what I mean by the existence of it is that because they've built the hull and the chassis uh, and they've got the sponsor weapons um, 100% correct and they're compatible with Kratos and Predator and possibly other tanks in the future it means that they can pump out different variants of this they can um, make this model they can make the sprues for this model with the tank tracks and the accessory sprues and the side uh, panels and then just focus on different turrets uh, and that's why I'm happy that it's in existence it's rather than the unit itself how it performs in games what do you guys think of the Sakaran battle tank. Please do put your thoughts and opinions down in the comments below. It'd be great to hear from you. Thank you ever so much for joining me today. Thank you for watching. The Emperor Protects.